Well, joining me in studio is my colleague, Komla Adom, who was at Adedempo, a suburb of Jamestown, to bring us all the reactions uh, that he witnessed. Uh, Komla, thanks for your time. A very tra tragic incident that occurred yesterday. Tell us, what was the mood like when you got there? Well, Samani, when you get to Adedempo right this moment, you find little crowds of you know, people who have gathered and are discussing um, what happened yesterday, some of the women are unable to control themselves. They are weeping and wailing because this is a very close community. The residents know each other so well. And so it's come to a lot of them as a shock that somebody who they had seen the morning of yesterday, mm -hmm. almost to the afternoon of yesterday, had even transacted business with her, all of a sudden dies within a whisker. And so they are, they are wondering, okay, what next? Because these are people who were wielding guns, numbering about six, who stormed the area, tracing this bullion van apparently, mm. shooting the, the, the police escorts three times straight just to mm. get him out of the way so they can do, take the money that was in the bullion van away. And so the residents are still shocked. They are traumatized. They say it will take some while for them to get over this. But I tell you, the home of the deceased, who we are now being identified as Joyce Amankwa, alias Sister Bedu, um, has been shot. It's been there are red cordings all over the place. Uh, I'm told that early this morning, other relatives came by to take some of her items out of her room and then mm. locked the place. And so when you get there right now, her shop and where she lived is under lock and key with red bands dripping the whole place, signifying that there's something that has happened mm. here. All right, tell us about the presence of security personnel in the area. Uh, did you were able to identify some uh, security personnel there? Also, carrying on investigations, you know, taking samples, fingerprints. W what more can you tell us? So when we got there, we found some CID officials just making their way out of the location. So you find them um, in their CID vests, you know, asking questions of the residents and those who were there at the scene when the mm. incident happened. I also saw the Accra Regional Crime Officer. He also came around with some of his men. They were asking questions and then going to the locations where the, the bullet holes were registered on some of the buildings and some of the cars in the area just to ascertain for themselves at first hand the extent of yesterday's incidents. And mm. so you would find police officials in, walking in and out of a place. And just before I got out of a place, I saw a batch of police officials coming back Trooping to the in. place just to attempt to understand exactly what happened and get first-hand information from those who were there. Okay. Well, uh, I need to remind you, John, also joining us via Zoom is Adam Bona, who's a security expert. But before I come to you, Mr. Bona, uh, let's take some reactions of the people at uh, the area. Hey, Okay, Okay, 
Well, those are some reactions there, but we'll come to the CEO for from some uh, translations. But before that, let's go on Zoom and speak with... Uh, let, let me come back to you, Commander, here in the studio. Uh, we, we listened to some of the reactions from the individuals you spoke to in Ghana. Could you translate for us what they were saying? So what um, Evelyn Amati was just telling us that she is close neighbors with the deceased and that she also has a younger daughter. And so she always went there to purchase biscuits and snacks for her daughter from the deceased. And so she knows her so well. And she left the area to work that morning, did the same thing, bought some snacks for her daughter, only to be called via phone and told that the woman had been killed. In fact, she didn't believe it because there are a lot of women who sell in that area. So she didn't know which of the women was being spoken about until she got back home around 4 p.m. And she was told that this is the woman who used to sell to her and for her daughter and etc. And so she's really saddened by that. And she also speaks about the fact that there is growing insecurity in the country. So there's a need for the police to um, improve their security intelligence gathering so that they can deal with these robbers and these miscreants who tend to foment trouble and leave families devastated for life. Mm. Commander, many thanks for your time. Commander, my colleague here is a reporter who was on the ground to, to get some reactions from uh, Jamestown.